I'm just going to demonstrate how to uh, strip down this screen. Um, from time to time we need to strip down screens to get in and have a look at uh, the lamps and the connectors on the lamps. And I've also transplanted the actual screen end of it, uh, of, a, um, of an LCD panel, onto a, the backlight assembly of another screen just to uh, make one worker out of uh, two unworking um, uh, panels. I'm going to put the screen on its face now on the uh, bench and uh, we're going to look at the pack first. This is our Control Logic PCB. That PCB um, will uh, interpret the data from the main signal board and put into a, um, a format that the screen can handle. Um, it's got its its LVDS cable goes into here. Uh, it would have a either a five or a twelve volt supply depending on your panel. And you also then up down this side, you have your inverter. And here's your inverter uh, output that goes to your lamp or lamps. There would be a 24 volt supply coming into this at this connector. And you would have a, a lamp on, lamp off signal also on a ground. You also might have some kind of error detection depending on the manufacturer. This is a Philips LG screen as we'll see by the panel type label here. Um, it's an LC320 WXN SCB1. I normally start by taking off this control logic PCB first. Um, as there's connectors inside this screening can. On this particular one, uh, we only have two cab uh, screws, it looks like. Larger panels you might have more. And as you see, we got a little tab here. Lift up the tab. Comes out, and we have our control logic PCB. Some screens might have more of these cables. This one here has only got one and this cable here if it gets damaged on this particular screen type can be replaced and as you can see it comes out on this particular one. But there are screen types that the cables that go down to your control logic uh, PCB are part of the screen. And if you damage or tear them cables, the screen has to be replaced. Now I'm going to uh, turn the uh, screen over. And we'll start by taking these screws off from around this metal rim. I'm going to start by taking this uh, metal rim off. There is uh, screws going around the outer edge here, silver screws. I will sp speed this up um, to make it a little bit faster. I wish in real time it was that quick. Um, the wonders of fast forward. On this particular one, the actual metal frame comes apart in segments. On a lot of them, the whole rim will come off as a, a frame. A 
and that's our screen, our, our, our frame off. Now we want to get this uh, PCB free. Sometimes there's clips going along here on different manufacturers and they would catch this uh, when you take off the screen. And if it was a screen you were trying to trans transplant over, you would tear these tabs. And these tabs on the larger screen give trouble. You heard a tab repair on screens, and this is where the this plastic uh, cable is bonded to this PCB. So we're going to lift this out now. So this is a previously uh, cracked screen, um, so I'm not too worried if I damage it or not, but this is what you would uh, transplant back onto a good backlight if this was a good uh, screen. Next thing we have to remove is this plastic uh, frame. And it's normally held on with some kind of a clip arrangement, or it could be held in with screws as well. But uh, this particular one is held in by clips all around, you can see here. And it's the same procedure all around. Just get to the side. Um, slight different clips at the side in this one. Then. We got the side. And I missed this one here. There we go on the far side. Turn it around, get one at the far side. Now we're down to this section here, and this here is your diffuser for diffusing the back uh, the CCF lamps because the CCF lamps at the end of there are tubes going across, and you don't want to see lines of light. It tries to uh, diffuse it to a larger area, so you don't notice that it's um, fluorescent tubes. So here we go. Pass the diffuser away. Make sure you put the diffuser back in the correct way. Um, as you can see there's layers in this particular one. You got this kind of a metallic one first. And you got this slightly different, and then you got a white plastic. Three layers on this one. And now we're down to the fluorescent tubes. 
I've had problems with connections inside these uh, where they've, uh, the uh, fluorescent tubes have come out of its connector. Our screws hold it in place. Sometimes you get clips, sometimes you get screws. Actually a third screw here, I didn't see. And three this side as well. These are pretty good uh, connector at the end of these uh, tubes. I'll just get a close up of them there for you. Seem to be well made. They would just prize out of that. Uh, I'm not going to prize them out because I don't have to. There is always a danger that these will break. They're very uh, Fragile, so I wouldn't go near them unless I have to. Um, over here, in the corner, we have a connector. Two cables, I'm just going to unbury it. runs along the length and it goes up here to your inverter and you can see that's it here going into the panel and then it comes out here runs over and runs over the far side Here. There's on the far side here into this PCB and onto these uh, tubes. What we have here is your high voltage comes in here along this cable and as you can see there's only one cable in it that's your high voltage and the other end of the uh, transformer on the output transformer of your inverter board is on this and that's connected to uh, let me see I get a shot This is your end, this is your earth end of your uh, lamps. And if I just put my lead onto the chassis, and as you see, we have a dead short there. So this end of the, these are at ground potential, while the other end is at um, is your high voltage uh, end of your transformer. That's it, really. That's all uh, there is to stripping it down. Here's the other end of the inverter. And uh, let's just disconnect the cable. And as you can see, you have only one cable as well connected to um, the uh, CCF lamps as well. And uh, here's our high voltage transformer, transformers. And as you can see, we have a connection to ground. Um, 
not too sure. I'm getting 0.4 volt there, so there's probably something in there, a diet or something. That's, uh, um, hope that's of some use to someone. Uh, thanks for watching.